I mean, a fizzy drink wasn't a great idea right then, was it? <clears throat> okay then, um, welcome to part two of the Rock Hopper build. Um, if you've not seen part one, uh, it'll be linked here. Um, go watch it first, because then you'll get a little bit of a better idea what I'm about to say. So, we'll, we'll wait, we'll wait. Huh. That's been enough time. So the rock hopper, uh, as you know already, uh, was quite damaged, the actual frame itself. Uh, so there's a few things I wanted to do to it to, uh, which I did mention at the end of the last video, uh, like to kind of like touch up the paint and kind of bring it back to life a little bit. Um, spoiler, like it was, it's, it's okay. It's not changed the way the bike looks immensely. Uh, usually if you give a bike a real good polish, it looks brand new again, Like, but this is there's so much damage. Parts of it look brand new, but the main parts don't still. Uh, but that's that's fine. Like I say, it's all about that crusty bike life. Yo. But uh, this was gonna be like, just like a part of a video during this series. Uh, I've just realized my bike shorts, my chamois just, I don't wanna look at that. So yeah, I thought this was gonna be just like a short video or part of a video, a bigger video, um, but this ended up just being a whole video. Like it, um, I went into a lot more detail than I thought it would. Um, and there was a couple of cool things that I come up with halfway through that like, they, I saved a couple of parts. You'll see. <sighs> All right, rock hopper. Right. Let's uh, move on to the next step of the Rock Hopper build. Oh my God, excuse that shirt. It was, it was well art, but this is my Rock Hopper. So as you can see, it's pretty crusty. Lots of lots of rust and scratches, patina, but it's also a lot of uh, Mackie stickers. So that was job one, was to uh, use my heat gun and get rid of those stickers. Oh yeah. I'm trying to get this sticker off. I always say use something like blunt and soft, then scratch the sticker off once it's all hot. Um, I don't think it made a difference with this frame, because even under the sticker, the scratches which I didn't expect. So that was cool. Ow. It was also hot. So this beautiful product is Rust Converter. It comes in many sizes and brands and different versions. Um, I stole this idea from uh, Toasty Rides. Um, essentially, you paint it on any of the rusty sections and it turns them black. Uh, I went to town on this frame and regret it. Uh, I put it on too thick and I have to then fix it later. But it did make a really cool little time lapse. So there's, there's that. A smart idea was to actually use it on the headset. Um, I'll talk about this in more detail in a bit, uh, but it was a good idea. So back to painting on too thick. Essentially, it left this kind of like residue around the edges where I was trying to then buff the, the paint and kind of repair that because it was then covered with rust converter. Uh, Tosi said, put it on first and any of the kind of extra bits you do around the edge, you can then get rid of. Uh, I went to town, I really messed it up, but I did fix it. So this is kind of the way it will look when I'm done. Uh, this is halfway through. So essentially I'm, I need to wet flat it between the actual polish it or before the polishing. Uh, and that got rid of it all, but kept all the black, which was what I actually wanted. It just gave me an extra step, but you'll see the color pops so for anybody who's ever restored the paint on frame or a car before you know it takes forever so i'm not going to make you watch the whole thing i'm just going to focus on the top bar to start with uh, so i basically use muck off uh, just because it's got that kind of like the washing up liquid and stuff type deal in it it just gives you a bit more lubricant when you're wet flatting but essentially i went over there very lightly with a very fine free 
3,500 grit uh, and then just kind of like just took a little bit of the edge off. Um, I did have to do quite a bit on the top because of the rust converter, but you know, I won't do that again. Then onto a scratch remover. I'm using this uh, G3 Pro. Um, you can use whatever you like. I've used this before. I like the way it comes out. Um, I kind of rub this on with my finger uh, just because I can't, cause this stuff in particular, and again, depends on the brand, this kind of goes a little bit uh, kind of hard. Um, and then I use it, then polish it in after that, uh, which I think works a lot better with this stuff. But like, again, this brand. Um, but yeah, lots of elbow grease, lot of sweat, but it was, it's worth it. I also needed a better stand, it just kept moving. Next, uh, I, I kept the same brands, but this is a resin super wax. Um, just some sort of liquid polish or wax. Uh, again, I rubbed it on my finger. I don't think this time it made much difference, but yeah, it's an easy way to apply it, isn't it? Uh, and then, yeah, same thing, just lots of wiping. I think the best thing with polish that I didn't realize for years was to use a rag, polish it, and then use a dry one to p polish it off. I suppose that's what wax on wax off is, isn't it? That's what the whole thing was and what it taught everybody apart from me, apparently. Interesting. And that's that. That's um, how I did it. I did that on the rest of the frame as well. I, I couldn't get any real good shots. So in the next video, I'll get some better glamour shots so you can see the results. Uh, but this is what I did next. So onto the headset and the new camera angle as well. Let me know what you think about this camera angle uh, below in the comments. But uh, as you can see, it was proper crusty. So I used the rust I was going to say crust converter, I suppose it could be called that, crust converter, and um, yeah, painted it on. Excuse the mess, we were having a bit of carnage play in the garden, but well, so is there, or between the painting. So now I'm going to literally make you watch paint dry. And that was that, so yeah, it, they come out pretty good. Like, it's not perfect. You can still see it a bit rusty underneath, um, but it's it's fine. You can see, but look, that's the difference. You can see where I missed a bit around the edge, so I just top that up, but you know, I think it makes it completely usable again. Uh, I did notice I forgot to clean some bearings, so let's clean some bearings. Uh, I want to show you my favorite Markov product now. Yeah, that's right, I'm plugging another Markov product. Um, I'm showing you how good it is by basically doing this all one-handed. So I'm holding my phone in the other hand whilst doing this. Um, it's the drivetrain cleaner from Markoff. It's the best thing for like cleaning off real grimy grease and dirt. So literally just a couple of squirts and then just give it a good old scrubbing. I had a little MO94 as well, just to kind of like push out any of the kind of um, like water and stuff. So kind of get any of that out there so it doesn't then continue to rust or something like that afterwards. Um, but all the muck off stuff is biodegradable. Uh, so I normally pour it all in one place and wash it around, wash it away later. Um, and then yeah, just pour a little bit of water in there to kind of get the rest of it out. I put some more MO94 on it later as well, by the way. And uh, yeah, like it's not finished. It needs a better kind of going over with better, uh, harder brush. Uh, but like that's just from one handed. Pretty sick, huh? And then same thing with the, the cups on the headset. I just used that and then a cassette brush to kind of like push out all the rest of the grime. Um, one more marker product. This is a disc brake cleaner. It's a waste of disc brake cleaner, really. But it does work really well if you're being lazy like me. But just like literally high pressure pushes out all the grease and dirt that's left over. And then refill the grease with copper compounds from Markoff as well. All uh, Markoff products will be linked below, but there's also um, a link to their website with uh, my affiliate link. Um, so anything you do spend on their website, I do get a little kickback. Hence the mention of Markoff products. This is probably one of my favorite things to do when I'm building the bike, because it's the last thing you kind of do before you do the actual proper build, which is rebuilding the headset and putting the fork on. 
um, again using that cover compound just because it looks good and I've got so much in my hands um, oh yeah in the actual fork itself there's a lot of dust from the rust from the um, stem so I kind of used some of that um, high pressure brake cleaner again to kind of get it all out essentially and then wiped with a cloth it worked quite well So I'm about to start the main build after this video. Um, so let me know what you think about this camera angle. Um, is it a better way to see all the kind of the fiddly bits and kind of see me building it up? Uh, usually I just have it on a tripod with a telescopic uh, telephoto lens so you can see nice close-ups and stuff, but I think this looks kind of cool and quite immersive. So let me know in the comments below if this is a better way of filming these parts. Um, so, and I'll try it out in the next one. And that's where I'm gonna leave it. I'm really happy with the way that the paints come out and the frame and I literally cannot wait to start building it. So yeah, that's the next part. And that's the end of another video. So thank you so much for hanging out with me again today. And um, as always, follow me on Instagram. The handle's on the screen right now. Um, if you enjoyed the video, comment below. Let me know a bit more about it. Uh, like if you like. And uh, please subscribe to the channel because you probably want to see the rest of this video, right? Uh, and if you want to watch some else now, because you can't wait to that, watch this one here on your screen right now. You'll like that one.